Hello everybody, my name is Wim Winters and welcome to this video that has been recorded right after the recording of the practicing session here at the Frenzel Pianoforte, sorry Mr. Frenzel, uh, of the Beethoven, of Beethoven Opus 2 number 3, that's his third piano sonata in C major. Uh, that live, that practicing session went or was released on Monday and during that practicing session a term slipped into my language or my brain that I was using for the first time, whole beat versus double beat. And I was thinking well, I should make a video on this because it's actually a very interesting and important point to discuss with you. If you're new here, double beat is a theory basically where you take the metronome number or a pendulum number in the 18th century as a schlag, a beat a full schlag, a full beat, like in the 16th, 17th century and way before the arm up and down of the leading musician was considered to be one, one schlag, one beat that equaled the tact, tactus, we made a video on that and there is a beautiful uh, YouTube channel, Early Music Sources, that talks about tact und tactus. It's an essential uh, point to understand. So key in understanding or reconstructing, so to say, the double beat, the whole beat principle. People often refer to the reconstruction of the term vibration oscillation. And of course, that's very problematic. You have both definitions as full swing or single swing, whatever, and the pendulum notation, that's all there. But that's not the essence. If you really want to understand or to reconstruct for yourself the principles of double beat, as used in the time still of the 19th century the metronome, you'll have to understand and reconstruct the term tact. Tact is in German what in English would be time. So we have two definitions. Tact can be in English time or bar. By people who write about single beat, um, saying that metronome numbers obviously are single beat, they will in the very awkward way refuse to see the connection to the original meaning of tact which is time everything changes with that i'm going to make another video on tact because it's so important my eyes opened when i read this article by alexei panov written and published in 2014 it's on internet i will link the article here down below and again i will make a separate video on this article because it's essential but what's essential for me is essential, I think, for many of you to understand what actually I'm talking about on this channel. The title of the article is Towards the Tact and Tactus in German Baroque Treatises. So it goes back to the menstrual notation, menstrual notation, let's say Renaissance music, but it will guide you towards the more modern times, quote unquote modern, of course, 18th century, to showcase that the Understanding of the term tact is key in understanding a lot. The term tactus and tact are connected to e each other here in this article, which is important to, to know. But again, I will make another video on this. We do not go too far in this. Was is der Takt? The Takt ist eine Bewegung mit der Hand und besteht in Niederschlagen und Aufheben, nach welcher die Noten und Gesang abgemessen wird. This is a quote somewhere of the 16th century. Uh, it's quoted in the article. and. The, I, I, in a separate video, I will link the sources much more than I do now. It's just an in-between here. So what is tact? Tact is a movement with the hand and it consists out of down beat with the hand and out up a beat with the hand. And according to which movements the notes get their values. So tact is, here it's, it's, it's clear and this kind of definitions you will find a lot. Tact is the conductor movements, is giving time. Tact equals tactus equals time. And if we scroll further in this article, you will see here that one schlag here equals one semi brevis. And you'll have a lot of these these figures and these uh, schemes. One semi brevis, which was a principal note value measured to the pulse, the heartbeat, so later actually described as around 60, that's the later tempo ordinario, but then the tempo ordinario was not for the semi brevis, but went down uh, what we would call the quarter note now. But one schlag, so if we would 
be able to understand what the what was exactly meant by schlag in english beat we would have solved everything and in fact that's also here in the article so for instance here you have a definition of how a semi is how long it lasts and it says a semi brevis oder ganzer schlag wird gesungen halb in niederschlagen der hand und halb in aufheben so a semi brevis or the full schlag here they make the this the full swing here they make not not swing full beat here they make the, the distinction between full and single because they are going to explain the parts of this beat is to be, to be sung half in going down downbeat of the hand and half in a bit so you have downbeat and a bit as a gancho slag and that's the length of one semi breve so one tactus equals tact tact means going down and up with the hand giving time and the semi breve which has one schlag is sung in downbeat and a bit so in the metronome equation this would be a semi breve equals 60 meaning 60 down 60 up so the semi brevis is the tact the the movements of our hand down and up or the ticks of our metronome is exactly the same represent the tact dialin the parts of the tact or as we have seen in that melzel instruction video parts of the intended time it's so easy it's just right in front of us we only have the only thing we have to do is be willing to see it not be afraid of the effects because they are big but don't be afraid just accept it i think it's there cannot be clearer than this okay i will i will, I will come back to this article um, some in a more elaborated video than this so basically if you have a metronome number what equals or what we would say that's the time that's the tempo which is not so hard to understand because it is the tempo indication in german that's called the tact so the metronome actually indicates the tact tylen the parts of that so if you have like the metronome is still on 80 for this beethoven piece was 80 for the minimum given by Czerny, you have one and one and one so every Two ticks is the unity of the tact, of the beat or the schlag. It's all the same. I'll have to make a lot of videos on that. It's just in front of us. It's not so hard even to reconstruct that history. When you think about this from that perspective, where two ticks form the unity of one tact or beat, schlag, then from that perspective, actually it's talking about double beat this practice or single beat where every tick that's the way we use the metronome today where every tick represents that note value in the metronome numbers and by the way if you do that you run into a lot of problems because so many pieces become just simply impossible to play um, you will have to run notes page long 15 16 19 notes a second even there is one beethoven sonata and i should have made a video a long time ago uh, given by czerny and the metronome number in which that results in single beat and a certain passage in 30 notes a second 30 notes a second and divide that by two you will still have 15 15 notes a second is an absolute maximum if you are not running longer than one or two octaves two octaves at the maximum and that's also happening there that's an interesting case and again i should have made that video much longer because Czerny indicates that's in the e flat major sonata um i don't know the opus number now um, but anyway i will make that video he says explicitly for that particular passage that particular run don't slow down so in single beat that means journey wants you to play in 30 notes a second 30 notes a second that's even beyond what we were talking about with Isidore Philippe that's only that passage related combined with the journey quote is enough to refute the single beat theory completely so but anyway, single beat, double beat, that's the terminology we are using. And now a question that actually is interesting perhaps for you also to think about and leave me in the comments what you think about. Maybe 
we should replace that term double bit by whole bit. And in fact, some of you have um, suggested that a long time ago. The double bit is such, you know, everybody knows what we're talking about when you say double bit or single bit. But actually, from the other perspective where you see the beat or the schlag in German as the unity of up and down, like is being described in the 15th, 16th, 17th century and way before and actually in the 18th century, it's actually everywhere, then it makes sense to not start from the modern interpretation on beat. But if we reverse things and we go back to history and we see the original meaning of Schlag and beat, one could say, well, then it's not double beat, it's whole beat. And what we are, we used to call a single beat is actually half beat. So in German, full schlag, schlag, full schlag, which is a synonym by then, or half schlag. And I kind of like that idea because it might be a strong step to change the terminology from double beat to whole beat. I would really appreciate you leaving me in the comment boxes what you think about this and why you would make the choice for double beat or sing or um, whole beat on and, 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 and just explain to me what you think about it because I know many of you are really thinking along with me in this journey reconstructing all of these Tempe historically and that's an incredible thing to know that you're there to think with me. So this is a direct question for you. Okay guys that was it for this Wednesday video. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's um, practicing session with Mozart, the Rondo. I'm looking forward to that. It's not being recorded yet to that session, how the result will be now, eight years after having not played that sonata and see how it works on the clavichord. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining me on this Beethoven journey and other composers and Thanks for supporting me on Patreon. If you haven't heard of our Patreon site, link below. We share now, I share now also from the standalone recordings, the full recording session. So if you that's something for you, we'd appreciate you checking that out. And for now, see you soon again.